Three makeover. Stop. And Shell exactly. meets the man who keeps waterbeds high and dry. We'll look forward to your company then. In the meantime, good night from all of us at our house. Now here comes money. G'day and welcome. Tonight, a money show you can't afford to miss. A half hour special on shares. Should you buy? Should you sell? Should you invest at all? Shares, getting it right tonight on Money. The strategies to getting shares right, understanding the market and how to make the most out of them. Also, the school kids and high flyers who are cashing in on shares. And our hottest tips on shares and funds, plus discount offers. We're starting our new series of money right here in Tokyo. Because if you're going to get it right and make money out of shares, you've got to understand all of the facts. And fact one is that the market is always rising or falling in value. And after a big drop, it can take many years to recover. That's certainly the lesson here. Ten years ago, this was where all the action was. Shares hit record highs never dreamed of. But by the beginning of this year, all those gains, and then some, were gone. One dollar invested back at the top of the market would have been worth less than 50 cents six months ago. But now, things are heading up again. And it's been just as dramatic in other markets in the region. Huge gains, then huge falls, then recoveries. When we were here at Wall Street in March last year, the world's biggest market had just broken through the 9,000 point barrier. Six months later, during the Asian crisis, it fell by 20%. But by the end of the year, it had once again reached record levels. Australian shares follow that same course. During the Asian crisis, a 21% fall, then down 12% when the Russian crisis hit. But now, as with most markets, those losses have been more than made up. In fact, over the last 12 months, nowhere in the world has avoided the financial pains and gains. The world share markets have bounced around like a yo-yo, up and down through the Asian crisis, the Russian crisis, the Brazilian crisis, and of course, the internet boom. It goes on and on. The important message here is that the Australian market will continue to be dramatically influenced by things like that. Although we're certainly part of the global economy, we're only a very small part, less than one and a half percent in fact. So as the old saying goes, if there's an economic sneeze somewhere in the world, we're going to catch a cold down under. Now look, I understand your concerns with all of this. Factors outside our control affecting our investments. But about the only thing that is predictable is that markets are going to move up and down. What is not predictable is exactly when they're going to do that. But after the break, I'll show you how to maximise your chances of coming out a winner. Plus, we'll need a few people who already have. It takes you a long time to make your first million dollars. But the second million is not so hard. Money, money, money. You know, whether you're a British investor, an American or an Aussie, when it comes to knowing what's going to happen to share prices, one of the best ways I know of looking into the future is to look into the past. This is the sort of ride the world markets took when there was an oil crisis in 1973-74, which led to high inflation. Australia down 60%, Wall Street 48%, London 72%. Then there was a steady move up, virtually recovering all of those losses until the early 80s, when commodity prices tumbled and so did the markets. Australia was the hardest hit, losing 40%. After that, markets made a strong recovery until we came to this little doozy in 1987. Wall Street crashed, the Australian share market fell by around 50%. That bumpy trip has continued through the 90s, particularly with that trouble in Asia and Russia. But in the first half of this year, the climb towards new highs has continued with only a few minor hiccups. The other important influence on share prices 
is what's going on around us. And here in Amsterdam and in 10 other European countries, they're coming to grips with the euro, the single European currency and its implications. And of course, there's plenty of other things happening right around the world. But what we've got to do is get back to the basics, ignore the short term confusion and look at why share prices rise in the first place. Shares basically give you part ownership of a business. If the business goes well, up goes the share price. And generally, businesses do well when there's a growing economy. And leaving Russia aside, most major economies are doing OK right now. In fact, Australia's leading the pack. The US is powering along, Europe's strong, except for Britain, and although it's been in minus figures for the last year, even Japan is starting to show signs of recovery. Shares also rise when interest rates are low. It doesn't matter what country you're in. If you can only get a few percent in interest on your money in the bank, and there are better returns available on the stock market, shares become extremely attractive. Once again, look how the figures stack up. Interest rates are around the 4 and 5% mark in Australia, the US, Germany and Britain, with Japan at the low end of the scale. Next, inflation, which globally is at its lowest point for several decades. So what do all these figures and percentages mean? Well, low inflation, low interest rates and growing economies are good news for business and, in turn, good news for shares. But things will never be perfect. Japan had a terrible 1998 and is still doing it tough. Britain's also having a difficult time with higher than average interest rates and very low economic growth, with not much improvement projected for the year ahead. So slowdowns and shake-ups, whether it's here in Britain or anywhere else in the world, are going to keep on happening. But in the long run, the world's economies will keep on growing. And there are more good signs too. Because people are living longer, giving up work earlier, and wanting a better standard of living, they need more retirement income. And these days, most of that comes from superannuation. These figures show what goes into compulsory super around the world. And even though some nations aren't doing enough, in my opinion, including Australia, more than half of that worldwide total is invested, you guessed it, in shares. That all adds up to billions of dollars flowing into the share market from superannuation funds this year alone. And in fact, there are plenty of reasons to be confident about shares. The markets have consistently risen over the centuries. The world's economies are actually in pretty good shape. We've got a growing population and there's an absolute flood of money from savings and superannuation pouring into the market. And all of these things give me a great deal of confidence that shares will still make you rich in the long run. But now here's Kim Watkins with some people who didn't have to wait very long at all. Technology is a wonderful thing, but no stock market craze or fad of the past has created as much new wealth in such a short period of time as the telecommunications and internet boom of the 1990s. These are some of the amazing returns if you'd invested $1,000 in these high-tech companies a year ago. Jackie O. Young is a director of one of the newer internet players, Liberty One. And while he and his model wife, JJ, aren't planning their retirement just yet, Jackie shyly concedes the share market has made them millionaires. Uh, well, you know, on paper, maybe, but, uh, you know, um, we'll see. In the six months that it's been trading, $1,000 invested in Liberty One would now be worth more than $1,800. So it's possible for people to make a lot of money on the stock market, and some have even become millionaires, but uh, I would say that it's equally likely that you could lose money on the stock market. Jackie's had a few unexpected wins along the way, like a late-night purchase of KTEL shares on the internet. In my half-asleep sort of uh, stupor, I bought about a thousand shares for my wife, for JJ, and a thousand dollars worth. And, uh, and in about five days' time, it was worth ten thousand dollars. While Jackie and JJ are new to the share market, Jerry Harvey has seen the booms and busts before. A year or so ago, we were six or seven dollars, and they've doubled to twelve or fourteen or sixteen dollars. And you look at that and you think, whew, a year ago I was only worth $8 and now I'm worth 16 That's amazing. Now this is the share market. 
Jerry listed his first company, Norman Ross, in 1972 and his second company, Harvey Norman, in 1987. After various share offers and other entitlements, $1,000 invested back then in Harvey Norman would now be worth around $80,000. You know, it takes you a long time to make your first million dollars, but the second million's not so hard. And then, then the next 10 million takes you a long time, then 100 million takes you a long time, then a billion takes you a long time. They're the sort of jumps. Although he owns 65 million Harvey Norman shares, Jerry doesn't like spending money. He washes his own car, he doesn't own a flashy home, and he even resoles his shoes. I am a tight ass. <laughs> but, but not a silly tight ass. After the break, our tips and discount offers. You know, ever since money started back in 1993, I've been recommending shares as one of the best ways of getting rich. And despite the market ups and downs, overall our tips have done pretty well. But one of the best performers has been Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation, based right here in New York. If you bought them when we gave you the good oil two years ago, you'd be sitting on a 100% plus profit. The three others to top the ton in percentage returns are the Commonwealth Bank, NAB and Woolies. Mind you, not all of our tips have turned out to be as profitable as News Corp and friends. In fact, there have been a few shockers, particularly in the mining area. Western Mining, North Limited and CSR have all dropped a fair bit, but not as much as our worst performer, the transport company Hollyman. So the message here isn't new to regular viewers. As you've seen with our share tips, you've got to diversify, you've got to spread your risk and not just hold one or two companies. This is how our tips have gone since 1993. Plenty have gone up, plenty have gone down too. But here's where diversifying really hits home. The rises have more than compensated for the falls. So if you'd invested $1,000 in each of our tips, today you'd be sitting on about a 30% profit. When it comes to diversifying, I still reckon the best way to invest is by using a managed fund. Now here in America, they call them mutual funds, and Americans have got more money in them than they do in the bank. Now the big advantage of a mutual fund or a managed fund is of course professional management. And the fact that your money is typically spread across 50 or more shares, plus you get to choose where your money is invested anywhere in the world. Over the years, we've recommended more than a dozen different funds. The best way to assess their performance is the average three-year return on your money. And when you look at that across the board, they've averaged a yearly return of close to 17%. Before we reveal this year's tips for shares and managed funds, plus our special discount offers, First, let's meet some viewers who are living proof that you don't need to be a high flyer to hit the heights on the markets. Thank you. Thanks very much. This is how 10-year-old Henry Hill starts his day. No comics, no Nintendo magazines for him. It's straight to the finance pages. Yeah, they're up too. You're getting wealthier by the day, aren't you? Yep, very wealthy. The stock market's been part of Henry's life since he was two, when his dad, Scott, bought him shares in Macquarie Bank. For instance, he owns some shares in Foster's, so he knows that uh, the beer that is drunk, you know, he's helped put that in the fridge, so to speak. Henry also knows he needs money to make money, so he gets his family and friends to give him cash for birthdays and Christmases, which he uses to buy shares. As a result, he's riding high. So Henry, what is it that you like about investing? Well, I like getting the dividend checks because <laughs> I like money. What are you going to spend it all on? Probably a BMW Z3 Roadster. And if you too share that dream of driving a Beamer, then lend an ear as Henry offers his exclusive advice. Some good industry industries to buy up our health cares and food companies and telecommunications are growing because of the internet. If you really believe that the price of gold is going to go up, you should buy some gold industry shares now. Hannah McCarthy is the first in her family to own shares. The 10-year-old took advantage of a money show offer last year to buy $420 worth of North Mining Limited. Well, what exactly are dividends? 
it's the profit that the company makes and because you own part of the company they're going to send you part of the profit. Unfortunately, Hannah won't get a fat check yet. Her shares have gone down. But she's not worried because she's in for the long haul. What do I say? Hannah, you're going to be a wealthy woman. Save half, spend half, and you're not going to have any worries, money worries. And you can get what you want as long as you want enough. Want it enough. Want it enough. <laughs> So are you going to be a wealthy woman, Hannah? Yeah. How soon? When I'm 16. Now, the share market may look like child's play, but if you're a junior investor, you might need some adult help. Different stockbroking firms have different policies on whether to allow under-18s to trade. So to avoid hassles, our investors chose to operate through mum and dad, with the funds kept in trust for them. Kelly Sloan with some pretty savvy youngsters. But now, on to our money show tips and special offers, starting with shares. And we're in the perfect setting to take a look at the first of the companies I reckon you should consider if you're thinking of investing. It's Australia's largest brewer, Foster's. Oh, thanks, mate. It's got a pretty healthy financial report card and has been expanding over the years into the ever-increasing wine market. Its recent acquisitions include Mildara Blass and Rothbury, as well as wineries and brewery distribution overseas, particularly in America. Next, AGL, Australian Gas Light Company. It's been the sole gas supplier to New South Wales for years and also has interests in major interstate gas lines. Thanks to successfully anticipating the deregulation and privatisation of the Australian energy sector. Third ANZ, which has around 14% of Australia's banking market. It also now has more than two-thirds of its business overseas, with operations in 41 countries, mostly in the Greater Asia region. So they're the shares. Now that special discount deal. And we've been able to organise cut price brokerage for viewers who buy one or all three of our share tips. The offers with two of Australia's leading stockbroking firms, Morgan's and D&D Tolhurst. Buy into one company, you'll pay just $20. Buy into all three and you get an even bigger discount, just $50. We've also got a fantastic deal for you on managed share funds. As many of you will know by now, these are my preferred way of getting into the market. And as you saw earlier, the funds we recommended last year have generally done very well. So we're going to give you another chance to access the same funds in a special Money Show deal. Here are the three fund managers. And first, the results over 12 months. And for those of you who invested last year, the returns on the Australian share funds have been excellent. The international funds have had a tougher time, once again, mostly because of the Asian and Russian crisis. But look what happens when we add the three-year returns. Great figures right across the board. You can see why I don't suggest shares or managed share funds as a short-term investment. Now onto the special offers. And here we've been able to negotiate zero entry fees and other bonus features for viewers who decide to invest. So you'll pay nothing to get into the funds, and instead of a $2,000 investment, you can start up with $1,000. Best of all, I reckon, to get into that regular saving habit, you can top up your investment with as little as $100 a month. So how do you take advantage of the share and managed fund offers? Well, you need to come here to your local news agent, because all the information you need is in this. It's our new money magazine, which we're proud to launch tonight. You might even recognise the bloke on the cover. It's going to be available from tomorrow and it costs $5. But we reckon we found a way that many viewers can get it for around half price. So keep on watching. But now, back to our deals. Just turn to page 40 and you'll find everything you need to know to help you make an informed decision about your investment. Then it's easy. Just follow the simple steps. Remember, the only way to take up the offer is through the magazine. Now let's go over the main lessons. So when it comes to shares, you really can get it right. Shares have historically produced excellent returns, but not without risk. We've had many major crashes and we'll see plenty more. But providing you're willing to build up a diversified global portfolio of shares and take a long-term view, you will get it right. 
But that just about wraps up tonight. But before we go, a final reminder about our tips and special offers. All the details are in our new Money magazine, which will be in news agencies and most Coles supermarkets tomorrow. You'll find plenty of information about the shares and managed funds I think you should be considering and how you can buy into them for a special discount. And speaking of discounts, I reckon I can show many of you watching tonight how you can get the tax man to help pay for your money magazine so you get it for around half price. That's because if you're using the magazine to help you manage your investment, you may be able to claim the cost as a tax deduction. Subscribe and we'll send you a special receipt to keep for tax time. Next week, are you sitting on a fortune and don't even know it? I'm quite surprised. If it's one that hasn't come up before, isn't it? I mean, I just can't understand why I've got $4,000 in the bank and I don't know anything about it. <laughs> Unknown windfalls. Could one be heading your way? Plus the Beatles, a rare discovery of memorabilia. My mother blames them for my schoolwork. It's those Beatles she used to say. <laughs> the $20,000 Beatles treasure trove. That's next Wednesday at 8 o'clock. I'll see you then. Good night. International air travel provided by KLM. Operating from Australia to over 100 European destinations. KLM, the reliable airline. Hi, I'm Lockie Datto. This week on Getaway, we're turning up the heat. It's our Holidays in the Sun special. Forget winter. We'll take you to the hottest destinations in the world. Don't miss Getaway, 7.30 tomorrow night. Tonight's Lotto Draw is next, followed by The Footy Show, live.